We are so delighted that you stopped in today. Our desire is to provide you with scriptural teaching to bolster your personal walk with God. I trust you'll enjoy the selection. May you receive it with an open heart and a spirit of prayer. God bless you all. Stand for the reading of God's Word. Hallelujah. Spirit's here. The anointing's here. You're here. God's here. Might as well preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pentecost 33 AD. The Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one court in one place, and suddenly there came the sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. They all turned around and shook hands and acted very dignified. So they acted like drunk men. You ever been drunk? You don't get drunk and just sit there unless you passed out. But you see, God, God has chosen the move of His Spirit for this end time to confound the wise with the simplicity of the move of the Spirit of God. The spirits have gone to war. I don't know if you knew that or not, but the spirits have gone to war. I face spirits in revivals and crusades and camp meetings and youth camps across this country that we never faced four or five years ago. With the oncoming of the Satan revival, the revival of witchcraft, Spirits are attacking people like I've never witnessed before in my life. When I prayed through 12 years ago, you got the Holy Ghost. He was on a heavenly honeymoon for three months. But now as soon as they walk out the door, the devil is on their case. We've had people get the Holy Ghost right here in this altar. The devil tried to lie to them before they could get out of the altar. But you hear me when the enemy comes in like a flood. Hallelujah. God is going to raise up a standard against him. You know why you're feeling something in this place tonight? You know why on Tuesday night we got a Sunday night crowd packed out? Because it's end time. And the world realizes that they've got to find something. And Jesus is where it's at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The 19th chapter of the book of Acts. I'll remind you, Friday night I'll be telling my testimony, my life story. I'm not proud of what it was, but I'm proud of him that delivered me. Yeah. Jail, prison, Satan worship, biker games, drugs, all these things. I'm going to be telling it. But it ends up good. Hallelujah. It ends up good. Charles Mahaney got the Holy Ghost. Charles Mahaney kept the Holy Ghost. Charles Mahaney fixed to go in the rapture. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. I feel a rapture spirit here tonight. The 19th chapter of the book of Acts is an exciting chapter. It starts out with God working miracles for the Apostle Paul. Then the devil sees the miracles happening in the move of God, so the devil tries to stop it. But he can't stop it and... Paul begins to anoint handkerchiefs from his body. Not long ago, God spoke to me and God said, you are living beneath your privileges as a Pentecostal preacher. I want you to go on a fast and I want you to anoint some prayer cloths and handkerchiefs and every place they touch, there'll be miracles. I was preaching for Pastor James Kilgore in Houston, Texas. They told me, said, there's a family there that we have preached to and I don't think we can ever reach them. The wife got a prayer cloth for her husband and for her son Wednesday night, Sunday night, the boy got the Holy Ghost laying flat on his back, talking in tongues. The husband ran to the altar, was baptized in Jesus' name. And now he's probably got the Holy Ghost. They call me and said, there's a lady with terminal cancer. It's eating her stomach up. It's ate plumb through and caused a blockage. She can't even take ice water. 
They took a prayer cloth to her. We went up to see her a few days later. She was sitting on the side of the bed eating a Big Mac. Hallelujah. I don't know if she had a Big Mac attack or not, man, but she... You see, there's things in the Word of God that we need to take. Amen. Hallelujah. And then people was converted. The goddess Diana was cast down. And they brought all their books and all their paraphernalia that was contrary to the word and the teachings of God. They had a, had a big giant bonfire right out there in the middle of this town. We done that last revival. The revival before I came here was Jacksonville, Florida, Brother Will Corrin. And God spoke to me praying. God said, I want you to get everybody to bring all their records, all their tapes that's not godly. Bring all their magazines, all their books. And uh, some rock TV guides. And <laughs> we had a big old bonfire. The TV station come out and filmed me preaching and put it on the 7 o'clock news, 11 o'clock news, and the 7 o'clock news in the morning, the noon news. Preach and repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's legal. It was unsolicited. Hallelujah. Then the headlines the next day. I mean, it was right up over the tanker that had burst and pulled apart. It was over the Mideast crisis. The headlines, big black bone letters said, Church comes out of the cave. And that Sunday, 15 different preachers preached about the church that had come out of the cave all around Jacksonville. You listen to me. God's going to raise up some people in this end time Amen. with the power of God like we never witnessed in our life. 13th and 15th verses I want to read in your hearing. And I'm going to preach about the devil tonight. We're going to dance on devil toes before we leave this place tonight. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to know it's the opposite of this service. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of every yellow belly, buck tooth, ball headed, skip back, bow legged, knock knee devil in Indiana. You know why? Because when God told me to preach, God gave me the power to cast these devils out. Hallelujah. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcist, and this is the only time in the New Testament the word exorcist is mentioned, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. An evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are ye? I preach tonight not unknown in hell. An evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? Hallelujah. Known in hell, you may be seated tonight. God bless you. Can you hear me all right in the back? All right, hallelujah. If you can't, I'll come back and set your lap while I preach. Hallelujah. I don't know how it happened, but somewhere these seven sons of Sceva came into one of the Pauline Crusades. They saw Paul operate. Intertwined in a Roman in Paul's ministry was a ministry of deliverance. He prayed for the diseased and they was whole. He prayed for the oppressed and they became free by the name of Jesus. And they saw Paul do it and they said, we're going to do it like Paul does it. And these seven sons of Sceva, they got this demoniac and they said, we're going to cast the devil out of him like Paul does it. I can't do it like Brother Urshan does it. I can't do it like Brother Phillips does it or Brother Hamby does it. I got to do it like Mahaney does it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And they begin to adjure these spirits. No doubt they laid hands on. One guy told me, he said, you don't lay hands on people to cast out demons. Jesus did. But you better be careful who you're laying hands on and what kind of spirit they have before you go popping your hands on them because you're liable to get in trouble like these seven sons of Sceva did when they begin to pray for this demoniac. They laid hands on him. They said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And the demons looked at them and said, Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? And leaped on them, whipped them, tore their clothes off. They had to streak all the way home. If there was ever a day that the church needed a ministry that's known in hell, it's today. 
If there was ever a day that the world needed a church known in hell, it's the day. If there was ever a day a generation needed a church and a ministry known in hell, it's the day. Paul we know, Jesus we know, who are you? Not so long ago, I was preaching a revival. A young man called me. He said, I want to talk to you. We went over. This man was a Satanist, sleeping in a coffin, had drank cat blood and sacrifices, had murdered three people. He said, can God deliver me? We said, yes. Laid hands on him, cast the demons out of him. He got the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. And he said, Brother Mahaney, the underworld has got a contract on me. Whoever kills me gets $10,000. I said, we'll pray for you. We'll invoke the name of the blood and no devil can touch you. We prayed for him the next day. Some men came in, took him over to the Godfather, the Padrone. And the Godfather said, I hear you got religion. He said, yes. He said, I hear you found Jesus. He said, yes. He said, I'm going to tell you something, boy. You get in that Pentecostal church and you serve God. And he said, the day you backslide, the day you get out of church, he said, my boys are going to pick you up and kill you. I said, man, that turkey ain't going to backslide. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, there's a power at work in the world today. But thank God there's a power greater than anything that devil has. There's a power in the name of Jesus. The lady called me and she said, would you cast the devil out of my daughter? And I said, I'll come over and I'll discern your daughter's spirit and see if she's got a devil. God didn't call me to contend with flesh. Now, if we can't cast them out spiritually, we know how to get them out naturally too. Hallelujah. But I went over, took a young preacher with me. I walked in the house. The windows was broken out of the house. Stuffing was torn out of the couch. And I said, what happened, lady? She said, my daughter broke those windows with her head and tore the stuffing out of the couch with her fingernails. And the preacher said, I believe I'll wait in the front room, Mahaney. Hallelujah. I said, go ahead, chicken. Hallelujah. And she said, it's no use for you to pray. I've had every preacher in town pray, but it's done no good. And I said, you finally got one that has the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said, now get set for a lot of trouble. She said, the last preacher that prayed for us, she matched on him, she clawed him, she spit on him. And she said, now get ready to be told off good. And I said, I'm used to being told off, lady, I'm married. She said, <laughs> the little girl was dead. I walked into the room, the little girl had her back to me. She was saying, I love you, Satan. I hate you, Jesus. I love you, Satan. I hate you, Jesus. Now, I hate a filthy lying devil that'll do that to a child. The girl was dead. There was no way for her to know when I came in. When I walked in, she began to pray, Why have you come to torment me? Why have you come to torment me? Now you listen, that child didn't need a theologian. That child didn't need some mealy mouth preacher that had been off someplace reading a comic book or watching Starsky and Hutch or something. That child needed somebody known in hell. Yeah, and she turned, the spirit of Satan was on her. And she began to grit her teeth and spit at me. And she said, I'm not afraid of you, Charles Mahaney. And come at me. And I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That little girl fell on the floor and raised her hands and began to say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? I'll tell you who we are. We're the church triumphant. We're the bride of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not long ago, I was in a crusade in Little Rock, Arkansas. I was coordinating a crusade there. Brother Melvin Clifford called me. He said, Mahaney, I just had this girl call me and said, I think you'd be interested. She's passing through Little Rock to go to Birmingham, Alabama to take her last rites in a Satan cult. He said, she wants to talk to somebody. Brother Melvin Clifford said to Peggy Clifford, picked her up picked me up at the motel. We took her over to church. And I said, how did you happen to come to call a Pentecostal preacher? She said, I was in Jackson, Mississippi. And I was in a Shoney's restaurant. And she said, all of a sudden, somebody jumped up and screamed, here come the Pentecostals. She said, girls was running to the powder room. They was climbing under the booths, getting in trunks of cars. And she said, who's the Pentecostals? 
And they said, some little dude named Crafts has got a church up the top of the hill. And every night they'd come down and have a crusade and show us. And she said, I knew if I ever needed deliverance, I needed to call one of them Pentecostal preachers. And she said, I've got to have help. She began to unfold the degenerate life in the Satan cult. She told how she had to give her body to the high priest. She told about how she had a little baby, but one of the high priests of Satan didn't know which priest he belonged to. She told how they commanded her to offer her baby on an altar of Satan. She laid the baby out and just hours old and watched the flames that burn up around her baby's body. She grabbed her face and she said, My God, help me, preacher. And I said, I'm fixing to help you. I want you to say Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. I'm going to teach you how to live victorious if you listen to me tonight. She said, God came in the flesh. I said, I didn't say that. Say Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. And she said, the Lord came in the flesh. I said, I didn't say that. Say Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. And she said, what's so great about that name? And we said, we'll show you what's so great about that name. Say Father, she said Father. Say Son, she said Son. Say Holy Ghost, she said Holy Ghost. We said, now say Jesus. And she said, I can't say it. We said, that's what's so great about that name, friend. That name will do something no title can do. That name will do something nothing else can do. We don't come to you in the name of the UPC. We come tonight in the name of Jesus. All we know, Jesus we know. Who are you? There is a power at work today. A ruler of this cosmos. His name is Lucifer. Sometimes in the Greek it's diabolus, which means slander. Diabolion, which means divider. This is a day of division. How many times have you kids told your parents, why don't you get off of my case? The devil doesn't come with horns and a pitchfork and a fork table. No, I don't. I'm sorry, that's a cartoonist aspect of Satan. But Satan comes as a deceiver. Satan comes as the angel of light. Satan comes telling you lies. Satan comes with counterfeit miracles. But you hear me, for every counterfeit miracle Satan has, God has the genuine. It happened a few years ago. It started in the children's comic books. You better be careful what them children bring home and read, parents. It started when did the little witch. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. What do you mean, huh? You ever read it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with that. Then, a popular TV show called Bewitched. About a witch named Samantha was married to some dingbat named Darwin or whatever his name was. Nothing wrong with that. Then a book came on the market called Rosemary's Baby. Getting a little deeper, you see, when somebody comes in to the church, the preacher don't sit down and say, now you've received the Holy Ghost, you've been baptized, you're a baby in the Lord, now I want to deliver you a great analytical, homiletical, expository facts about homo sapiens who reside in crystallized domicile, should be raised from protecting spheres to the atmosphere. Now was it Eden that the moral, leaven of moral disintegration entered into the heart of his family of man? They don't do that. They say, fast, pray, read your Bible, read your Bible, pray every day. And the devil knew he could not stuff a full-scale saint revival down the throats of America. So he came in with Bewitched, Wendy the Witch, then Rosemary's Baby, about an incubus spirit. A girl moved into an apartment. She was ravaged by a spirit, had a child that was diabolical and human. Then came the book, The Exorcist about this young girl that was possessed with devils. And they called some Roman priests over to exorcise the spirits. And I could read all the book I started it, but I don't read that kind of stuff. God delivered me. And I turned to the back of it. And it ended up the Roman priest jumped out the window and killed herself when the spirit entered into them. You know what they need? They needed somebody known in hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the number 13, I stayed in the hotel a while back. They had me on the 13th floor, but the number said 14. That's the occult. Broken mirrors. Rabbit foot. One preacher said, i got to go back. I said, why? He said, I didn't bring my rabbit's foot. Didn't help the rabbit very much, did it? Hallelujah. A Ouija board. 
Do you know where Ouija boards are manufactured? In Salem, Massachusetts by Parker Brothers Toy Manufacturing Company. Some of you students know what happened in Salem, Massachusetts back in the 16 to 1700s. That's where the purge was made with the witches. You listen to me. If you've got one of them things in your house, you go home and burn it just as fast as you can. Because they open up a psychic trigger. You say you believe a Ouija board's evil? No, the board's not evil. It's what you contact when you go open your mind up to the power that operates that thing. I was playing with the Ouija board one time when I was high on drugs. That was tame compared to what I was used to. And I was playing with the Ouija board. I said, how many gods is there? That thing said one. I said, what's his name? It said Jesus. I asked the Ouija board. I said, where do you get your power? And it said, from Satan. I said, is the devil in this room? It said, yes. And I said, who's the devil in in this room? And it said, you. I kicked that thing, give it a good cussing. They won't tell me I had a devil in me, man. Tarot cards. Fortune telling. All these things is coming into the world today. Famous prophets and prophetesses. I read one the other day in the National Enquirer. I read that dude every week. I was reading that and it had famous prophets that was going to foretell the future. And they had some earth-shaking prophecies. Number one, there was going to be an earthquake. My God, that ain't no prophecy, man. I can tell you that without the Spirit. Number two, there was going to be a plane crash. I couldn't land the other day in Atlanta, Georgia, flying around and around, talking in tongues, laying hands on the seats and the walls and everything. And the pilot came on, he said, 1,000 planes a day take off and land in Atlanta, Georgia. Of course there's going to be a plane crash. Lois better made that crazy thing. Then he really topped it off, put the icing on the cake, was really getting prophetic. He said, before long, he perceives that Elizabeth Taylor will have an affair. <laughs> My God, friend, that's not prophecy. Prophecy is when God says it and it comes to pass. If I read my Bible right, you don't have no room for play when it comes to prophecy. You miss one prophecy and you're a false prophet. When Jesus Christ died on Calvary, 22 ancient prophecies was fulfilled in the space of six hours. You see, the world is preoccupied with supernatural powers. Now I'm going to tell you why the world is preoccupied. I want to tell you why the Satan movement is having such a revival. I want to tell you why all the movies on the television are about witches and witches' covens and Satanism and stuff like that. Because there's a hunger in the hearts of the world for the supernatural, and they can't find the supernatural in the cold, lukewarm churches of today. Inborn and ever human is a desire to commune with supernatural. And they go someplace where you can't feel nothing but the air conditioner. I stayed up the center aisle, shake hands with a nice bird behind the pulpit. The most lively thing there was one night the preacher got his belt buckle hung on the pulpit and they can't feel nothing. There haven't been no power of God there. They can't feel the power of God. The preacher talks about social issues. My God, no wonder they go out there. But you hear me, the church I'm a part of, the church I'm preaching to today, Calvary Tabernacle, was born in supernatural revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this all right? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in a crusade not long ago, and we had a psychiatrist receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I like to talk to them. Did I run one crazy when I was a sinner? And this psychiatrist was, was, was licensed with the Louisiana State whatever board or something. He came, got the Holy Ghost sitting right out in the audience, raised his hand, went to talking in tongues. And he said, could I talk to you, Brother Mahaney? And I said, you ain't got no ink spots, do you? He said, no, no, you ain't got no square face for me to... Try to stop down in round holes, dude. He said, no. I said, okay, man. And we began to talk back and forth. And I said, now let me question you just a little bit. How does the psychiatric profession feel about cosmic forces that influence the mind of people? He said, Reverend, we have come to the conclusion that there are actually beings in the universe and in the world that can actually make people do things against their own will. And I said, for instance, he said, Charlie Manson. Adolf Hitler. He said the snipers. 
And he said, it happens more at the full of the moon than any other time. And I said, if you believe that outside influences can cause people to do dastardly deeds they wouldn't do otherwise, what is the signs that a person is beginning to be taken over by these spirits? He said, number one, nudity. He said, the first thing to do is take your clothes off. Number two, acute schizophrenia. They become split in personality. Number three, violence. And I was preaching for Brother Barnes, T.W. Barnes. I jumped up and I said, Elder, you know what he's saying? I said, what the psychiatric profession has found out in 1977. I said, we've known it for 1,900 years. Hallelujah. He said, what are you talking about? And he went crazy. And I said, no. I want you to turn over there to where Jesus came up to the shore of Gadara and the demoniac come meeting him out of the tombs. I said, it's a perfect allegory, a perfect type of what the medical profession is telling me tonight. Violence. He cut himself with stones and nobody could chain him. They had nudity, threw all his clothes off. Then split in personality. You know what he said? Why have you come to torment us? You listen to me. You go downtown this summer when the weather warms up just a little bit. Watch the people walking down the dog on watch. Them. You look at people split in personality. You don't say nothing to them until they've had that first cup of coffee in the morning. I don't think a child of God would be hooked on nothing but Jesus, man. Right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Diet Pepsi. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. You see, the revival of Satanism has already broke out, and the only thing that can stop it is the revival among the Jesus name, one God, tongue talking, Holy Ghost churches of today. I thought about how the powers of the devil move. You ever come in, there's just a pressure on your chest. You can't hardly worship God. The song leader said, let's all sing. And there's just such a pressure. The pressure of the times. The hour we live in. You can't hardly put your hands together. You can't hardly break through into old time worship. And you try to worship God. And there's powers there that hinder you. And you try to worship God. You know what that is? That is the oppressing powers of demons that try to stop us from worshiping God. But you know what God wants us to do? God wants us to break through that. Amen. God wants us to have a breakout. Hallelujah. God wants us to say, I'm going to worship God. I'm redeemed by love divine. It's all over me. It's keeping me alive. It's down in my feet. It's keeping me alive. Hallelujah. I was trying to find something. I had a mustache and a goatee. Wore a priest collar. Had a big old black cape. Sleeping in the graveyard. Can you imagine a little old maid go to the graveyard to put some flowers on a tomb or something? And all of a sudden, some big dude jumps up with a black cape and freaks everybody out. I tried to find something in Satanism. I studied Eastern philosophy. I tried to find God through every avenue I could. Some of my friends got into organic food. They was going to purify their digestive system. That was going to purify their body. And that was going to purify their minds and purify their spirits. The printing sunflower seeds and wheat germ is not the answer. The answer is a good conscience, conscience toward God by repentance, baptism in His name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost and fire. Spirits would come on me and these spirits would get around me and these spirits would chant to me, kill yourself, kill yourself. Sometimes I'd take razor blades and I'd cut my hands and my arms and let the blood pour on tombstones. I'd run up and I'd go out to cars on the street, just people driving down the street, and I'd kick and beat the windows out of their cars. I'd be sitting in my friend's house, jump up and kick the screen out of the television. Do them a favor and didn't even know it. Hallelujah. 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 These spirits had a hold of me. They was driving me far from the path of reality. They was driving me to the brink of suicide. One day I was sitting in my mother's house and these spirits began to touch me. I could feel hot hands all over me touching me, saying, run, get out of here. I didn't know it, but pulling up outside was the pastor of the First United Pentecostal Church of that city. I didn't know him. The neighbors didn't know him. My mother didn't know him. But them spirits in me knew him. Paul, we know Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, 
You know what that demon's going to say? Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? And the love will jump on you, whip you, and your love will be embarrassed on the way to the house, man. There's power in the name. The only hope we have is in the name of the Lord. The only hope we have is in the name of the Lord. The only hope we have is in the name of the Lord. Spirits are everywhere. Blood sacrifices on the West Coast. Actually offering human sacrifices. The East Coast sleeping in coffins. Drinking animal blood. Young people cutting their fingers off and sacrificing him on the altar of Satan. Catching dogs and offering dogs on the altar of Satan. Young girls run away from home. Girls that think they're cool, you know. You can always tell the cool ones, you know, they try to comb hair like Aaron Paul said. They're cool, man. And these girls run away from home. They get picked up. They get strung out on drugs. And a lot of them end up on an altar of Satan as a sacrifice to Satan. You listen to me. You young people had better get in church and talk in tongues. Parents, we have got to stand in this end time. The day of being up, up one day and down the next is over. We have got to stand like we've never stood before in our life. You listen to me, demons are for real. And demons have got to live somewhere and they're looking for a place to live. A lot of time in service, when a sinner repents that's been in gross sin, those spirits leave him. And the Bible said they walk about in dry places seeking rest and finding none. There's no rest. The only way a demon can have rest is if it has a body to live in. It's in dry places. It's seeking a place of rest. It's seeking a place of rest. And it can't find any place. And my God, you sit there picking your nose and cleaning your fingers when the power of God's moving across the service and you're liable to get a devil on you. Me too. Amen. You know why I worship God in service? Demons are going to live forever. And they're looking for a place to live. And I've had my share of that burgers. Hallelujah. 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 I found what I was looking for, man. I found it. Hallelujah. I found it. Hallelujah. I found it. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'm fixing to preach on something. And if I get excited about it, you'll have to pardon me. I haven't been in long enough to learn how to quench the Spirit. But I'm fixing to preach on the name above names. I'm fixing to preach on that name that will bring deliverance. You listen to me. One lady told me, she said, my God, I'd be afraid to come to church when you're preaching like that. Why? She said, but when you talk about the devil, you're glorifying the devil. Now, wait a minute. If we was going out to battle, if we was a battalion or a troop of soldiers, and we was going to battle, and the sergeant got up and said, okay, boys, right up over the hill is a group of the enemy. They got machine guns and they fight like this. They use bayonets like this. That's not glorifying the enemy. That's telling us where they're at and how to combat against the enemy. You know what's been wrong with us? We've not known how to fight devils. We've been afraid of the devil. But the Bible don't say fear him. The Bible says stand your ground, look the devil in the face, and resist him, and he'll flee from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody told me, said, I'd be afraid to get up and preach like that. I want to tell you a law, a spiritual law in the Satan church. A law called the law of spiritual return. That's how come I'm not afraid. The law of spiritual return. What do you mean, preacher? Somebody out here tries to put a spell on me or anybody else, and the spell doesn't take effect. You know where that spell goes? Right back on the one who cast it. You know what's going to happen? Somebody tries to put something on the child of God. That old devil's going to come to the bloodline. Hallelujah. He's going to throw on here his air break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to see that bloodline. He's going to hear him saying, Oh, I love the name. 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 Love the name. And that devil's going right back to the one that said it. I was in Dallas, Texas preaching. I was standing, I was at the holiday. A preacher called me, and he said, is this Charles Mahane? I said, yeah. He said, Mahane, I've got to talk to you. Who are you preaching for? I said, I'm preaching for John Kershaw. He said, how much is Kershaw paying you? I said, I don't know. Probably won't get independently wealthy over it, but 
He'll take care of me. Hallelujah. And he said, whatever he's paying you, I'll pay you double if you come and preach tonight to my church. I said, why? He said, I just got a telephone call from the high priest of Satan's wife of Modesto, California. And they tell us in our meetings, you can go into a lot of churches and mix up the choir, mix up the preachers. But when you come to a sign that says apostolic or United Pentecostal or Jesus' name, that's a stop sign. We can't handle that people. And she said, he never would let me go, but I'm away from him. And she said, I'm going to be in your service tonight. And he said, my God, my what in the world am I going to do? I said, will you do what I tell you to do? He said, yes. I said, I wouldn't have no songs. I wouldn't have nothing. I wouldn't even take an offering. You know preachers get serious when you don't do that. And I said, I would not do anything. I said, the first thing I'd do, I'd take that pulpit and I'd preach. I'd preach Jesus' name until the raptors run. I'd preach Jesus' name until the saints couldn't stay in their chair. I'd preach Jesus' name until the devils begin to tremble. I'd preach Jesus' name, hallelujah, until we was all shouting. I'd preach Jesus' name until we was talking in tongues. He called me after the church. He said, you know what happened? He said, halfway through my sermon. That woman jumped up, covered up ears, and said, My God, shut up. Hallelujah. He said, I keep preaching the name. Hallelujah. She jumped up, run down the aisle, hit the front door. We never could find her again. You hear me? There's not one devil that can stand against the name. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. One day the high priest walked into the temple. It was his turn to do the sacrifice. They waited outside. There was no coming out. He went in, but he didn't come out. Everybody began to punch each other. I wonder where Zacharias is. What do you reckon happened to Zacharias? Man, I don't know. He's been in there a long time. But inside, a drama was being unfolded. All of a sudden, Zacharias turned around there and stands a tall, bright angel. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Blessed art thou, Zacharias. Your wife, Elizabeth, is going to have a child. He's going to be great inside of many, turn the children back to the fathers. He's going to make every high place low and every low place high. He's going to make every crooked place straight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How am I going to know that this is true? How am I going to know a sign? He said, because you doubted, you'll not speak another word until all these things be fulfilled. Finally, Zachariah comes out of the temple. Did you see a vision? Mm. An angel? Mm. What happened? Mm. He goes, get some this man. Mm. Hallelujah. A child is born. They come to him. He still hasn't, hasn't spoken for nine months. I guess it's about that long. Was well, it last seemed like nine years? Hallelujah. And they come to him, Zachariah, you're going to name the child now. Mm. Well, here's a parchment. You're going to name him uh, Zachariah. Mm. Hallelujah. You're not going to name him Zachariah? Why? All your forefathers was named Zachariah. Mm. What are you going to name him? J-O-H-N. And when he used the right name, the string of his tongue was loose, and he began to speak. And when the right name was used, his tongue was loose, and he began to speak. You hear me, friend? There's something about using the right name. There's something about the name of Jesus that nothing else can do what that name can do. Amen. Now, I like to read. I'm a book nut, man. I like to read. I go down to the second hand store and buy a suitcase full of books. I like to read. I like to read westerns. So well, I don't read them. Well, don't. Same for me, but I like to read them. Now, I read, I read the clean westerns. The clean ones. I sometimes have my wife to check them. Right? And uh, the westerns I read, the only thing that cowboy kisses is his horse. And, I get to read about the hero. And it seems like it always happens in Dodge City. And a bad guy wears a black hat, a good guy wears a white hat. And the hero always gets in the jam. Half the time Tonto get him out, but sometimes Tonto ain't there. And I get to worrying about my hero. So you know what I do? I cheat. <laughs> I get that book, man. I turn over to the back, read the back chapter. Hallelujah. Oh, he got away. He got away. He made it. Hallelujah. Long about 12 years ago, 
I read the first chapter of the book of Genesis. I read where man fell. Hallelujah. I got to worried about my hero. I turned over to the back of the book. I found out my hero was. Hallelujah. It said in the 20th chapter of Revelation, I saw an angel that had a key and a chain. Our hero was. Hallelujah. 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 For 400 dumb, dark years, God never spoke. Not one anointed song, not one anointed testimony. One day, old Simeon, he had a promise he's going to see the consolation of Israel. He's walking back and forth. He looks out the temple door, face the east, and all of a sudden he saw a trio coming up. They walked in, four folks. Hello, how are you? Your name, sir? My name is Joseph. This is my wife, Mary. This is our little baby. And we have come, he's eight days old, we have come to take care of the law of Moses. Well, great, 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 great. Would you come out on in, sir? And Simeon had a promise before he died he was going to see the consolation of Israel. I feel like the generation of Simeon. I'm going to preach you about, preach you about that sometime. I cannot die. My generation cannot die until we see a revival that restores everything that was taken away by the latter rain and all the rest of that junk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, you see me feel something. Mm -hmm. uh, your purpose for coming. Well, I, as I said, sir, the child is eight days old. We've come to take your law to Moses. You have your offering? Yes. Uh, the back of me thinks there's something different about this bunch. The child's name, please. Joseph said, uh, you tell him, Mary. You tell him, Joseph. He said, pray somebody tell me the child's name. <laughs> well, we are calling him Jesus. Well, <laughs> Simeon felt goosebumps from tap dancing up and down his spine. The hair standing up on his medulla and cranium. Hallelujah. He said, you're going to call him what? Jesus. Are you aware of the legal ramifications that's nestled in that name, Jesus? Yes. Do you know what that name means? Yes. Jehovah is salvation. By what, what authority do you call him Jesus? The angel of God appeared to us, hallelujah, 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 and said, Mary, thou shalt have a child, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us, naming Jesus. Amen. Oh, Simeon can't hardly keep his feet still now. He said, you mind if I hold a child? Hallelujah. You mind if I hold him? I told you I'm fixing to get excited. I can't help him about the name. I've seen too many demons cast out. I've seen too many blind eyes open. I've seen too many drug addicts set free when that name was used. And I can't help but get excited about the name of our names. Hallelujah. Could I hold a child? All of a sudden they lay the baby in the arms and said, all of a sudden, the angelic host begins to say, Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Born to you this day in the city of David is the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And all of a sudden, the prophet Isaiah begins to stand up, for until the child is born, unto us the And his name shall be called wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. And old Simeon does a little boot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are you going to call him? Jesus. Oh, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Hallelujah. The angels begin to sing that your God whom you seek, your God shall come with the recompense and the blind eyes shall be opened and the deaf ears and stop. Behold, the virgin shall bear a child. Hallelujah. You're going to call him what? Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And Malachi the prophet began to sing down the corners of the centuries, the Lord whom you seek. The Lord whom you seek, the Lord whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. He has come. The Lord has come. God has come. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Now the king. Listen, friend. The devil can't stop this church. They came to Jesus. They said, show us the Father and it will satisfy us. Jesus said, have I been a long time with you? Yet you've not known me? Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. If I walked up to Brother Trapani's and I'd never seen him, somebody else came to the door, his wife, and I'd say, I want to see 
Carl Tropani. How are you saying? His wife would say, Hey! Yes, dear! <laughs> He'd come to the door and I'd say, I want to see Carl Trepan. He'd say, you're looking at him. They said, we want to see the Father. Jesus said, you're looking at him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have I been so long time with you? And yet you've not known me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am in my Father. My Father's in me. How sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. A man told me the other day at a radio station. He said, now when Jesus told him that, he was talking about you and your wife. Yes, he was. He said, you and your wife are one. And Jesus and his Father was one. Like you and your wife are one. He said, I can explain the three persons in the Trinity. And I said, pray tell, do it. He said, you've got the voice of John's baptism. He said, you've got the dove that comes down. And he said, you've got the sun and the water. That's three persons. I said, I don't see but one person there. He said, the voice, you don't think that's a person? I said, no. He said, you don't believe the dove was a person? I said, if you think it is, don't ask me to go dove hunting. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wasn't talking about that. Oh, hallelujah. I said, you believe when you see me, you see my wife? He said, yes. I said, look at me. <laughs> he looked at me and I said, tell me what Sister Mahaney looks like. <laughs> well, I said, now tell me what she looks like. I said, is she tall, short, light, dark, slim, heavy? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what he's talking about. Right. Man, when you see me, you don't see Sister Mahaney. How'd you like to marry a girl look like me, Doc? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was what he was talking about. He was talking about when you saw him, you saw the Son of God. But indwelling in him was the Spirit that spoke this world into being. Indwelling in him was the Shekinah, the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty. You know how God and the devil work? God works through the Spirit. The devil works through the Spirit. His Spirit. His Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know how the devil works? You know how he manifests himself? Used to the devil fought the church. He don't fight it no more. He joins it. That's right. A rebellious spirit of the devil. That's right. I was talking to a preacher or a man a while back. He wasn't a preacher. He would make a patch on a preacher's pants and he was standing there my boys were standing he said did you hear what brother so and so done my, I said shut up he said what do you mean I said I, what, you don't know what shut up means down here shut up what do you mean he said I was telling you about a preacher I said I don't want to hear about no preacher in front of my chin he said nobody's ever talked to me like that I said that's a trouble with you you need a man of God to tell you something boy that's a trouble with the world today that's a trouble with the church today we're afraid we run somebody off. We pat them on the back. My God, it's time to preach it. It's time to get ready for the rapture. We've run out of play days, friend. It's time for the payday. And he said, Are you meaning you want me to shut up? I said, If you don't, I'm going to lay hands on you. He said, But the preacher doesn't. I said, I don't care what the preacher does. I said, see them two boys standing there? And he said, yes. I said, that's my boys. I said, how many kids you got? He said, I got five. They're all grown. He said, none of them's in church. I don't know why, brother. Man. I said, I don't know why. They've had fried preacher for breakfast, dinner, and supper. I said, you've sucked on the preacher's bones. You've talked about him like everything in the world. I said, you've talked about him like a dog. You've put your filthy hand on the ministry. You've put your filthy tongue on the ministry. You've talked about the ministry. You've run the preacher down. No preacher could please you. No evangelist could please you. No pastor could please you. And your kids are going to hell. And you're going to hell. Go to you, buddy. Hallelujah. I said, when my boys repented, a preacher had preached a sermon. I said, a preacher baptized my children. I was gone flying in a jet plane in Ohio somewhere when Brother Melvin Clifford and Little Rock baptized my big boy that sings up here. I said, when my children was dedicated, 
an old man of God dedicated those children. I said, when I was in the hospital having 14 nervous breakdowns in the waiting room, there was a preacher there with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, friend, when my kids were sick, a preacher anointed them. I said, when they come to the altar, a preacher preached them under conviction. I said, no matter what happens, they're going to have to have a man of God. He'll marry them, he'll bury them. They've got to have a man of God all their life. And don't you run him down in front of my children. Hallelujah. My God, we've got to stand for something. Hallelujah. You listen to me. That's the devil, the accuser of the brethren. Listen. Did you hear what Trapani done? Did you hear what that guy done? Huh? Did you hear what he done? You hear what? I don't know what he done. He gets scared. Hallelujah. 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 If somebody comes like that, you say, hold it. That's a man of God. That's a man of God. That's the man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Brother Mahaney, did you hear our pastor might leave us? My God, he's got enough sense to get a hold of God. He knows the will of God for him. Don't you worry about it. He's the man of God. Hallelujah. You listen to me. The devil comes in and the devil plants the seed and goes on and forgets about it. The devil fights the church today by joining the church. The devil don't miss a service. You might lay out and watch guns spoke, but the devil don't. The devil don't miss a service. He's here every service. Every service. Somebody shouts, but I wonder if they're in the spirit. Somebody gives a message in tongues. I wonder if they're in the spirit. I'm preaching about the devil tonight, how he works. Somebody gets up, said, I believe I'll run the aisle. Whoa! I wonder if they're in the spirit. There they go. Look at it. Now, if they make it past that post, I'll think they was in the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You see, God never called us to judge anything. That's what He put the ministry in the church for. And then all the saints get called to preach holiness to all the sinners. Wait till that checkered suit on, man. Up here on the platform, the red suit on. Blue tie. Conservative people. A green shirt! <laughs> oh, we got a holy choir. They all got white shirts on. Oh, except the leader. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, it's time for us to judge men by the Spirit. The Bible said, judge no man after the flesh, but no man, every man after the Spirit. You know how I know these are good men? I feel the Holy Ghost in them. Aren't you tired of letting the devil use you? The devil talks to people. Hey. Now if you get up, you wave your arms and you shout. Listen, you need to behave yourself in that carol. You need to behave yourself in that carol. Hallelujah. Just clean all up. Be dignified. Get you some real cream. Real cream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be dignified. The devil talks to the church. And my God, we listen to him. That's what scares me. You know what we need to learn how to do? We need to learn how to take that name and use that name and bind the devil and bind the devil and bind the devil and bind the devil devil in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 You listen to me, there's an all-out battle. The spirits have gone to war. It's Holy Ghost or hell. It's the church or hell. It's holiness or hell. It's Jesus' name or hell. We have reached the day that compromise is impossible. Amen. The spirits have gone to war. There is a spirit working in the universe in this world right now that desires to see every one of these young people messed up. Oh, yeah. Amen. Girls, the devil has just the right boy. Just that smile. Mr. Cool. To send him in here just to get you drawn out. Boys, the devil has just the right chick. Come on, walking in here. I can't even walk like a sissy man. Hallelujah. 
and get you out of church. But you hear me. I believe for every one of these called of God young people that God has the young person He wants them to marry. And if they'll pray, God will send it. If they'll pray, God will send it. We don't have to have lose one out of the choir, one out of the youth group. I'm sick and tired of the devil ripping the church off of the young people. It's time for some people known in hell to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, there's a power at work today in the world. He's at church tonight. The devil came to church. He's here. And you know what? When God called me to preach, God gave me the authority to bind him. And I can not only cast the devil out of a person, I can cast him out of a building. I can cast him out of a home. I can cast him out of a church. Hallelujah. I believe he said, What's there be bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. We bind every power that's not of God. We bind the devil and rebuke him and cast him out in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Young people, minds completely burnt by the powers of hell. Snipers climbing up on towers and killing people at random. You don't know what you're going to face, what kind of demoniac you're going to face today. And when you get in there, you've got to use the name. It's too late to try to pray through about it then. You better have the power when you get in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day a little girl came in, set her books on the table, went in her dad's drawer, got his 38 pistol out, put a KISS record album on. That's how the devil, young people. I just throw that in. Throw that in, won't charge nothing for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, so that old country stuff, old Buck Haggard or whatever his name is. Hallelujah. She took that pistol. She waited till her little brother came in from school. She took the pistol. Bow! He fell dead on the carpet of the front room. Soon Mama pulled up under the carport with an armload of groceries. Mama came in, set the groceries down. The little girl took Dad's pistol and cocked the hammer back. Shot her mother in the face and her brain splattered all over the kitchen wall. The little girl took the pistol, cocked it back, laid it in her lap, listened to the music, rocking, humming. Soon, Dad pulled up, set his dinner bucket down, walked into the front room. The little girl killed her dad. A little Sunday school girl sat there rocking in the chair. The neighbors come in, they said, My God, honey, why did you do such a horrible thing? And she said, Dad never was happy. He had to have two jobs to keep up with the folks across the street. Mama was always complaining, and my little brother always cried because he didn't have a bicycle. But they're at rest now. You listen to me. There's a power in this world that desires to destroy every family here. I've never seen the Pentecostal family being attacked like it's been attacked the last few years. The preacher's homes. But you listen to me. It's not going to be long until the trump of God sounds and God takes His church home to be with Him forever and forever. You know, there's two powers walking these aisles tonight. Discerning of spirits is not to tell what, whether you've got a town craft suit on or floor shine shoes. Discerning of spirits tells whether you're of God or the flesh or the devil. There's three powers we're dealing with today. God, the flesh, and the devil. The flesh is here and the flesh is weak. The Spirit of God comes and says, I love you. Would you come to this altar tonight? Would you give your life to me? The Spirit of the devil runs over and says, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You listen to me. Everybody that hears the gospel in the end time, I'm going to prophesy for you. Write it down on your Bible. If it don't come to pass, I'm a false prophet. Before the rapture of the church, Everybody that sits in an apostolic service and, and, and rejects God will be possessed by a devil before they die for the Holy Ghost one. All neutral ground is being erased. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to loose every spirit that holds you bound tonight. And if you reject God, you're going to walk out on your own. You're going to shake your face in the face of God with nail-pierced hands and say, I don't want you, God. And when you walk out that door into the blackness of Indianapolis, Indiana, there's powers that desire to damn your soul and for you to spend your life in a mental institution somewhere. I don't know when it's going to be. But someday, you'll be driving in your car, you'll be in your bedroom, and all of a sudden, a presence will be in the room with you. And you'll sense that dark, brooding presence. That presence will say, come on, I've come to claim what's mine. 
What do you mean? I've come to claim you. You chose me that night instead of Jesus Christ. I'm yours. Come on. No. My God, no, devil. Let me get back to Calvary Tabernacle. No. Can you imagine those cold, clammy hands touching you? No, death. No, devil. The devil don't have any heart. Come on. No. Please, no. Please, no. No, give me one more chance. It's too late. You listen to me. God spoke to me tonight when I was shut up over there praying. And God spoke to me and God said, you preach tonight that somebody is picking their partner out of this place tonight. The powers of hell are walking these aisles. And I bind every devil within a mile of this place. I bind the adversary where the devil has no power over anybody in this place tonight. You're a free moral agent right now. You can accept God or you can reject God. I don't know if you know it, but we just had an exorcism in this place. We just cast the devil out of here. How do you know? I have fought the devil ever since I've been in this pulpit. The minute I stepped up, I told Brother Trapani today, I said, it'll be a fight. I've preached it. The devil will fight. But when I said I rebuked the devil, I dreamed to leave. I felt that fight lift. The power of God's here right now. Hallelujah. Reject this, and someday you'll scream in a mental institution and say, my God, if I could get back to that church, if I could get back to that church. I'm talking to some potential suicide victims. If you choose God instead of Satan tonight. I'm talking to men that will stand with tear-stained faces and say, my God, Brother Mahaney, I heard you preach a couple of years ago when me and my wife is divorced, my children are gone. I stood in a prison farm not long ago and I seen a man that was a professor with tears running down his face. And that man said, my old grandma was a Pentecostal Christian, son. He said, whatever you do, you keep what you got. I thought, my God, let me never get to preach another youth camp. Let everybody I got the revival for, let them cancel me out. Let me have to come and sit on the back row of Calvary Tabernacle and never get to the pulpit again. But I don't want to lose my Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want to go to hell tonight. Burning and clawing and screaming and scratching forever. Hallelujah. What's the devil going to tell you to do in the next few years? Can you imagine men like Charlie Manson so possessed with the devil that he commanded those people to walk into Tate and Blanca houses? They stabbed their people with a meat fork time and time and time and time again until they said their bodies was mush where they stabbed them. Then they went in and cut off a piece of ham out of the ice box and sat around that mutilated body and ate it. Took their fingers in the blood and wrote pig on the wall. I wouldn't do that. At one time, Charlie Manson wouldn't have done it. At one time, Susan Atkins wouldn't have done it. At one time, none of these young people would have done it. But when you come into a service and you come in contact with God, there's some spirits immediately when the Spirit of God contacts them, they leave. And these spirits come back. They come back and they bring seven spirits with them. And the last state is seven times worse than the first state. As the Spirit of God moves up and down these aisles, every head bowed, every eye closed. The eyes of heaven and hell are watching this service tonight. God's looking for somebody in here tonight. God's searching for somebody tonight. And as God passes your way, you listen to me. I'm talking to people tonight that will point their finger back from eternity and say that was the dividing time. I remember the night I blew it was the night I rejected Jesus as he passed down my eye. Demons are real. They're going to live forever somewhere. You've got to spend eternity somewhere. You've got to spend the rest of your life somewhere. A wrecked home, a mental institution. Taking a gun, putting it to your brain, blowing your brains out. Every head better be eye closed. Just keep your hand down and you've picked your partner. 
but when you slip your hand up, you're saying, Jesus, I want you. You know what? I've seen people slice their wrist. Wish to God I could take you to the front room of that house where that little girl had run her head through the windows. Clawed the stuffing out of the couch with her fingernails. I wish I could take you to the hospitals where the alcoholics sit. As the power of God passes up this aisle. Is there one to raise their hand and say, I want Jesus Christ in my life, preacher? Nobody looking, every head bowed, every eye closed. You're not joining anything. Could you raise your hand and say, I want Jesus Christ in my life, preacher? God bless you. I want Jesus Christ in my life. God bless you. God bless you, sweetheart. I want Jesus in my life. Come on, raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. When you raised your hand, the angels came. Just keep your hand down. If you keep your hand down, you're picking your partner. You say, I'm not saying I love the devil. When you keep your hand down, you're saying, I don't want you, Jesus. That's it. Just raise your hands. Hands going up all over this place. God bless you, lady. Come on, raise your hand. You're not joining this church. You're being honest with God. I've got to have something in my life. Don't think the enemy's not watching. He's watching you. He's watching you. Heaven and hell's watching you tonight. Raise your hand and say, pray for me, preacher. Pray for me, preacher. God bless you. Come on, raise your hand. God bless you. Back here to my left. That's it. Get those hands up. Come on. I want you to pray, church. We're having enough hands raised right here to have the biggest revival Calvary Tabernacles ever had. Come on. Raise your hand. Pray for me. My God, pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. Come on, raise your hand. God bless you. God bless these hands. Come all across this place and raise your hand. Back here to my right. God's dealing with some souls back here. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. As the music plays, right now the devil is talking. Don't you listen to them. Don't pay no attention to that crazy preacher. But in spite of the taunting of demons, in spite of everything the devil tells you, I want everybody to raise their hand. Right now without hesitation, without reservation. I want you to say no to the devil and yes to God and get up out of your seat and come to the front of this auditorium as fast as you can right now. Before the devil can talk, get up. Get up and say, I'm giving my life to God. I'm giving my life to God. Come on, hurry. Hurry, get up. Come on. Come on, hurry. Come on, that's it. That's it. Come on, lady. Come on, hurry. Come on, you to raise your hand. Hurry. My God, this is why God brought you to this service. Hurry. Hurry. Come on, hurry. Would you come? Hurry. Hurry in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, would you come? Hurry. Hurry. Come on. Come on. Hurry. My God, come on, lady. You to raise your hand. Hurry. Don't say no to him. Would you come? Would you come? Come on, hurry. In the name of God, come to this altar. Come to this altar. Come to this altar. That's it, Papa. Let's do that right here. Hallelujah. That's it, young folks. Come on. From all over this building, people need to be flooded this altar now. Hey! Back up! Hurry! Don't let the devil talk to you out of this. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. People pray. Right back here, there's a lady God's dealing with. Come on. Hurry. Come to this altar now. Hurry. Come to this altar now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, hurry. Come on. In Jesus' name. 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 What would my life have been if I had one night got up like you got up and come to an altar? In Jesus' name, would you come? In Jesus' name, would you come? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're free now. Get up and come. Hurry in Jesus' name. Come on. I can't hold this much longer. We got people we never saw before in this altar. Come on. Come on. Come on, would you come? Come on, lady. Hey, come on. Come on, would you come? Would you come? All right, the Holy Spirit tells me to close this altar. In 30 seconds, you've made your choice. In 30 seconds, you've chosen Satan instead of God. You say, no, I haven't. Yes, you have. 
29 seconds, it's over. 28 seconds, you made your choice. 27 seconds. My God, I'd rather die right now. Never leave this pulpit. Never get to hug my children again as to have walk out of this place without God. 25 seconds. 24 seconds. 23 seconds. Would you come? Hurry. 22 seconds. 21 seconds. My God, run. 20. 19 seconds. Would you hurry? 18 seconds. 17 seconds. Hurry. 16. 15 seconds left. 14. 13. 12 seconds. 11. 10. 9 seconds left. 8 seconds. 7 seconds. 6 seconds. Hurry, get to this altar. Get that friend by the hand. Listen, I've never done this in a revival hardly. But I want you, if you're sitting beside somebody that needs God, I want you to take their hand and say, please come to with the altar. Please come with me to the altar. Four seconds. Three seconds. Two seconds. Take somebody's hand and say, please come with me to meet Jesus. So close.